before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is just a brief update video for you guys. Um, my voice is a little hoarse because I taught a really incredible workshop this past week and called the Alchemy of Movement. I know I've mentioned it briefly here on the channel. I am considering doing that workshop on uh, through Gnostic TV. Um, I've got to work some things out, though, for people who want to do the workshop but don't live in the area. We did have Zoom options at Sacred Garden Yoga, and we had a few of you from Zoom. But um, I've got to talk to the powers that be at Gnostic to see if I can get music and manuals and all that kind of stuff out to you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, just stay tuned. We'll figure it out. Um, speaking of Gnostic TV, we have our panel coming up, uh, Tales from the Dark Side, which is a bunch of people who have survived the occult, the dark side of the occult, um, as well as researchers and people who have spent their life researching this group. Um, that will be an event happening on Gnostic TV as well. On top of that, you guys, you have been asking me relentlessly to go back through all the bloodline stuff you know like the different types of blood types the rh negative uh, or if you if the rh factor if you are rh negative which i am all that kind of juicy stuff well there's a lot to say about that um i have done a lot of videos on youtube about the different blood types um but what i've kept them to on youtube is more mainstream especially medical stuff because there is a lot to learn like that stuff is important there's a lot to learn about yourself if you know what your blood type is right however the more conspiratorial stuff about the rh negatives especially people like me who are o negative i've been a little bit hesitant to talk about on youtube just because of all the shenanigans going on in the world however i talked to shanti because she is also and O negative, and she works with a lot of whistleblowers who have given her even more information about the significance of the different blood types. And we are going to be doing a live show on Gnostic. All right, I think that's going to be September 21st. I have not gotten any confirmation yet, but once we know the details about that show, we will let you guys know um, so that you know to join us over on Gnostic just so we are safer in what we talk about because there's a lot to this. Um, with that being said, I, I want to make it very clear that all the blood types in the world are different, but they're all equal. All right, so I don't want anybody coming over to this show thinking that there is going to be some blood type that is perhaps better or special compared to the other blood types. No, 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 no. Every single blood type has different side effects, which create different realities for the person having the blood. But just karmically, what you need to work through is what type of blood you're going to be given in my experience. Now, it is true that the powers that be do like the O negatives. Um, there's a reason for that. There is nothing in an O, an, an, there is nothing in an o negatives blood. That's what I have is O negative. Um, we do carry more oxygen in our blood, so therefore we have way more energy than most people, just generally speaking. Um, but we'll get into that over on that show. But again, I just want to reiterate that in the world of the light, the, the uh, there's no such thing as better or worse than, right? It's all equal but different. 
different but equal in value, okay? So if that's something that you, if you're one of those people that have been bugging me about covering this stuff again, it's coming. Um, just know that the hesitation has been this particular platform, but we're going to work that out so we can do it on another platform. We don't have to worry about um, being watched. Um, with that being said to you guys, I am now, as you know, some of you know, I am now on TikTok. I feel like an old girl over on TikTok because it's like what the young kids do and I'm 41, but I am loving it. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job trying to figure it out. I haven't connected my YouTube channel like on the my homepage to TikTok yet. I'll do that soon. Um, but it's fun. It's fun over there. And I think once I get to a thousand subscribers over on TikTok, I think I can go live on TikTok. Um, and the beauty, beautiful thing from what I understand about going live on TikTok is that you guys can join me if you want. So if I, if I go live on TikTok, um, if you guys watch the live, I can pull you up into the box, as they say. So you can be a part of like literally be a part of the discussion, too. It's not just in a chat. So please go over and subscribe to my TikTok channel um, so that we can perhaps do some lives over there where you guys get to participate as well. Now, with that being said, uh, words on TikTok are watched more than words on YouTube. So please be mindful of that. If, um, if we get to that point, just be careful of the words you use. It's not our choice, but don't hate the player, hate the game. You know what they say? So anyway, so that's it. Join us over on TikTok. Also, you guys, I've got so many deep dives that I'm working on. Um, I'm trying to finish up some research right now. We are, of course, in the middle of looking at Francis uh, Borgia who's the next Borgia. He was like the grandson of Juan Borgia. Uh, Wani Poo, the one that went missing, his body went missing, that one. Um, and he was also in bed with the, I'll just say the Society of Jesus. I'm not going to say the actual name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And I've done a deep dive on the Society of Jesus because we have to look at that in order to understand the Borgia influence into this group. Um, that short form is here on YouTube. Long form is over on Rumble. And um, I'm going to be looking at a few more little things that revolve around the Society of Jesus, Jesus before we get deeply into Sir Fran or, excuse me, St. Francis Borgia. Yes, he was sainted. Very, very fascinating. But on top of that, I've also got some other deep dives. I've got a list of like deep dives that I'm going to be going into. Um, I've got some urban legends that I really, really, really want to cover. Um, and I've also got some like folk history that are kind of creepy, like stuff from the South that many people might not know that I thought would also be interesting to kind of cover uh, for those who like the creepy stuff, um, like myself. <laughs> and um, I have got a Another video that I want to do that popped up yesterday. So if you follow me on TikTok, yesterday, which was Sunday, September 8th, um, you know, if you got a dog, somebody put in the comment section, you you walk in Atlanta. Atlanta's not a walking city. Duh, I drive. I've got a car. But when you've got a dog, you go on walks for your dog, right? And there is, so I live in Midtown not doxing myself midtown is a very big very big region of atlanta but we have what runs through atlanta um 75 85 we call it the connector so like i-75 and i-85 kind of run together they become like the same freeway going through the city and then they uh, separate towards the airport at the end so the connector is literally smack dab in the middle of atlanta georgia goes right through the city all right and so i live in midtown so i live close to what would be like the 14th street exit so if you're coming on the connector you're going to go take this like 14th street exit it's like 14th 12th 10th street it's like all different to get to different exits within midtown well on the, on the other side so when you're coming off the freeway from north you're coming off so over here is midtown and the other side of the connector are different areas like we've got georgia tech over there we've got the bluff over there which is like its own ecosystem it's crazy that there's documentaries on the what we call the bluff and then we've also got this area called atlantic station now atlantic station itself is pretty nice and so we walk over there sometimes we'll, we'll cross the connector there's a sidewalk that goes over it and we'll go there's like a park over there and atlantic station is like this outdoor mall there's also apartments above and restaurants and you know it's just a, a, a family 
area, family-friendly kind of entertainment area. But there's, again, a park, like, right outside of it. And we have one of those arcs that, that they talk about in, like, Tartaria. There's an arc, like the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. There's one right at, at Atlantic Station. And if you go through the arc, there's a park there. And the way the park is designed, it's very geometrical, you know, which could just be basic city planning, but also could be for other reasons, if you know what I mean. And we were over there yesterday because there's like a lake over there. We were there with our dog trying to get him to poop. And all of a sudden I noticed this crazy statue that I had never seen. Like it, it literally, I felt, I feel like it popped up out of nowhere. I'm over there all the time because that's where I do a lot of grocery shopping is in that, that area. And I have never noticed this particular statue. And I put it on my TikTok. So if you're following along on my TikTok, it's one of my last videos where I posted and I was like, what the hell is this? It's a crazy statue and so we were kind of far apart we walk over to see if we could see a um plaque there was no plaque um i've talked about this area before there's a lot of references to egypt in this area with the plaques but there was no plaque regarding this particular statue and i posted it and i got a lot of responses so now i know who that statue is but now I'm confused as to why that statue is because who this person is in the statue has nothing to do with Atlanta history or American history. It's got nothing to do with any of that. And so I am going to be doing a deep dive into this particular historical character and why they would be putting this particular statue, really big statue, in the middle of this very populated, heavily trafficked area of the city. I think that Atlanta, Georgia has a lot. I think there's a lot of secrets here that the powers that be don't want us to know. For those who don't know, Atlanta is, this isn't the original name. The original name of this city was called Elizabethtown. And it was nothing. It was just, as they tell us, it was just like this railroad depot milledgeville used to be the capital of georgia then at some point it changed to take on the name atlanta well, where does atlanta come from atlanta comes from atlantis you could say that they named it after the atlantic ocean because we're right on the coast but where did the atlantic ocean come from you know there's i've just got some questions i've got questions like you give me an answer and that answer just leads to more questions you know and we know that there's a lot with underground in atlanta i mean we even have an area called underground atlanta which i want to cover actually with jessica the cryptid huntress because she's from this area too um we have all these crazy stories and folklore in this city especially little five points which is like a more bohemian area of the city they have all these crazy um stories about there being this underground city that's under um my mind's gone blank my mind's gone blank a uh, daughter's closet and oh yes hold on let me double check my bad it's psycho sisters and the junk man's daughter i got them to listen i'm I grew up in this area and I'm so my wires crossed there. So we have the junk man's daughter and then we have psycho sisters. And these are, these are stores in little five points. And there is a legend that's been around since I was a kid that, um, psycho sisters, that that shop, that there's a door that leads down to this like hidden underground city. And the thing about little five points in Atlanta is that again, it's a, it was for the longest time. It still kind of is a very bohemian area. It used to be a very cheap area to live. It's been gentrified. Now it's actually one of the more expensive areas to live now, but um, it used to be very hippie. Like you, that's where you got this as a kid. Um, and so there was this legend that a group of old hippies, decided at one point that they were done with the matrix and so the legend states that they created this like underground city underneath little five points and they did it using the old tunnel system now it, there is an old tunnel system in atlanta i've been in some of these tunnels and some of these old houses and a lot of people say it has to do with like the underground railroad when there was slavery um i have my questions i used to kind of think that's where it came from but now that you know we know history might not be exactly 
As they've taught us, I have got my questions about where those tunnels actually come from. We know that there's speculation that these the tunnel system in Atlanta actually went all the way out to Elberton, which is where the Georgia Guidestones were. Now, now they're gone. Um, I've been out to the, as you guys know, I, that was how I started this channel. I went out to the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, I've been out there a lot before. They actually was there like seven days before they went down. Um, so there is this speculation that that there's connections there as well. Um, we also know if you're a, a huge fan of the Tartarian history, there are channels that literally go through Atlanta, Georgia and show you Tartarian uh, artifacts. Um, the city is full of Tartarian artifacts. In fact, Piedmont Park, which is literally down the block from me, it's like our, I mean, we have a central park here in Atlanta, but Piedmont Park is like our central park, like in New York, it's a huge park. There's restaurants and you know swimming pools and trails and all sorts of stuff to do it's where a lot of the festivals happen like music midtown um but there's a lot of you know they, they talk about with piedmont park that and this is the history i always thought about the park is that it was created for the world's fair when the world's fair was kind of going around the world that piedmont park a lot of the old architecture is left over from when the world's fair was in atlanta Yes and no. I think some of it is from the World's Fair, but some of it definitely is most likely Tartarian. So there's all these weird things around the city. Getting back to the, my main point, which was this statue that's appeared at Atlantic Station. And my boyfriend was like, God, it kind of feels like this area, Atlantic Station, there, there must specifically be something here. Because there's already an arc there, one of those arcs, the magnets. If you study Tartaria, the magnets um, and there's all these plaques talking about Egypt. We know, um, if you study alternative history, that there is um, a belief, an allegation, a speculation that the southeastern United States is actually Egypt, the old Egypt that is spoken about, you know, in the Emerald Tablets and all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of firm reasons why people believe this part of it like tennessee means the country of isis there's obviously a lot of egyptian artifact down here uh there's actually a particular kind of gold that's specifically from the southeastern part of the united states like there's a particular form of gold that you can't find anywhere else in the world you can only find it in the southeastern part of the united states and apparently that's heavily spoken about in a lot of old egyptian manuscripts so if Egypt was where they say it is, they wouldn't have known about the gold in southeastern United States. You have all these springs in South Georgia, North Florida that are very mystical. Um, even the bayous of Louisiana all the way to the swamps of South Georgia, which that's what a bayou basically is, is a swamp. Um, it's just there's a lot of evidence that supports this theory that the real Egypt is here in the southeastern United States. Now, um, so if that's true, and if Atlanta's name is significant with Atlantis, the lost colony of Atlantis, then there's definitely something about the city. There's probably particular portals and, and markers in the city that are high, are very significant to, to our world in general. You know, Atlanta, I've, I've lived in many cities um, and I grew up in this area. So I'm probably partial to Atlanta. But out of all the cities that I've grown in, Atlanta is very unique. It's a very unique city. It's not like any other city. It's not like New York, even though we're Empire State South, even though we are the New York of the South. It's not like New York. It's not like LA. It's not like London. It's very unique in its own personality. It's very eclectic. Atlanta is a huge art, a huge art scene here in Atlanta. Huge. I'm not talking just about Hollywood being here or like the rap industry being here. But I'm talking like visual arts. Like there's a huge, huge, huge. Our our city is very. We we have murals and painting. It's just very much before every other city was putting up murals. Atlanta was doing that. We have the Beltline, which is a huge cultural thing here in Atlanta. Um, it's just it's it's. There's a lot here. I guess what I'm saying is that there's a huge significance to this city. Huge, um, and. For me personally, as a citizen of this city, it does kind of scare me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. When we come up to the um, competition, we'll say in November, we're definitely going to put in our competitor's choice early and then leave the city just because it's hard to maneuver this city. It's not like on a grid like other cities. They've already burned the city down once before. So, um, yeah, we're going to get out of the city after 
for, for that event just to keep ourselves safe. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be doing some research into that, into that statue. Um, because I, it's here, it's right here. It's, it's very close to, if you guys remember, I talked about this a long time ago. It's very close to the original TBS center. So Ted Turner, Turner Broadcasting System, um, this is where CNN is located. So the home of CNN is here. It's actually like a block away from me, uh, cartoon network, anything that's related to Ted Turner and his media company is like literally a block from where I live. And there is the new facility, which is on the one side of the connector and the old facility, the old TBS center is on my side of the connector. And then over the connector is the new one. And so this old building looks like from the seventies, it's not really, it's tiny compared to the new, the new structure, but there is an owl, a golden owl that they placed on top of the old TBS and it's facing across the freeway, across the connector to the new TBS center. Um, of course, this is the owl of Minerva, the same owl that we see in that famous park campground, we'll say in California. I'm not going to give the name of it because of this platform. You guys know what I'm talking about though. And, um, yeah, so and it's very close. So that's all very, it's all in the same vicinity as this new statue that's popped up in the park at Atlantic Station. And so I'm going to be doing a huge deep dive. And I thank you guys, the ones in t and on TikTok that gave me some clues. Thank you for doing that um, because now I know where to start my research. So, yeah, and if, if you know anything about occultism in Atlanta, Georgia, send me an email at esotericatlanta at gmail.com. Um, just so you know, um, I am not against the occult at all like i think people in in this on this channel i i see the occult as being either good or bad depending on who the practitioner is you know all occult means is hidden knowledge that's all it means and so we know that nothing that the dark uses the dark can't create anything it can't create only the light can create so everything that's being done was originally created by the light and inverted by the dark so if you know a lot of it, about occultism in in and and you want to give me some information just know that i'm very i feel like i'm pretty fair when it comes to this stuff and i'm not someone that's out to destroy um occultism i just i just don't want the bad occultism going on does that make sense does that make sense i'm not i'm not vigilante right i, I try not to be I, I i definitely try to live by seek to understand so you can be understood like i understand that there's complexity in these things and so i'm not someone that's just going to rip things apart because honestly if we were to take down everything that the darkness has inverted then we would have nothing left right and so and all of this stuff started off as good things anyway so i'm not with that being said i'm i believe more in like healing things and like restoring things and not destroying things so um so don't be afraid to reach out to me if 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 you do know a lot about occultism in atlanta and you you want to reach out to me and just for the people who are going to twist what i just said i'm going to be very clear about this again i don't believe in the bad stuff the bad stuff if you're doing something that is hurting another person if you're doing something that is taking the consent and free will away from another person then you need to stop that needs to be stopped but when it comes to practices done for the light and people's religious beliefs that don't affect anybody else that don't hurt anybody else you got to live and let live this if you want freedom so for all the christians out there all the christians out there if you want freedom of religion then you got to give others freedom of religion too as long as nobody's hurting anybody as long as nobody's doing anything that upsets another person's free will or another person's consent then you got to let people be if you expect to be if you expect to live in peace and be able to practice your beliefs as your conscience dictates then you have to do the same to others right yeah also with that being said um i'm gonna be trying to get in touch with laura knight my boyfriend is actually in touch with her because she's his like third cousin so i'm hoping i can get in touch with her because i noticed she's been doing some interviews and so i would love to get her on my channel as well so i'm gonna be working on that that will definitely be a rumbler a rumbler one um because she's definitely someone that has rocked the boat a lot when it comes to challenging 
the establishment and wanting to know the truth about what's really going on. She, of course, is the person who channels the Cassiopeians, which comes from the Law of One. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, join me on TikTok. Join me on um, Wednesday over on Aquarius Rising Africa for our next show. And Catherine Edwards will be coming on my channel this week. Um, and yeah, join us on Gnostic for all the fun things going on. I'll keep you guys posted with the uh, RH Negative show on Gnostic as well as the Tales of the Dark Side. So anyway, again, oh, one more thing. I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. So moving forward, if I have a very scandalous deep dive that this platform doesn't like, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a short form on YouTube, which is a heavily edited one. And then there's going to be a long form on Rumble, which is not edited at all. Okay, does that make sense? So if you are a follower of mine, again, I, I know I've got some new followers. Welcome. This is not something that I want to have to do. Trust me. I don't think anybody wants to have to do this, but we have to play within the boundaries of, of this platform. And so if you see a title of a video and there is in parentheses that it says short form in brackets at the end, know that there is a long form edition over on Rumble. All right under my channel name, Esoteric Atlanta on Rumble. So if you don't have a lot of time, the short form is great. If you do have the time, you can go over and watch the long form. Again, this is not something that I want to do. This is just the way it is right now. It is what it is, um, you know. And honestly, guys, here's the thing about the censorship. YouTube is a private company. They can do whatever they want. Right. If, if they if they they're a private company now where it becomes a legal issue is if they're working with the government. But other than that, like any business has the right to to do to give service to whomever they want to give service to. So we're trying to be respectful of their boundaries. If we're not, they'll just take our channels down anyway. So again, this is just what we have to do in this moment because of their rules. I can't change their rules. Neither can you. Um, I get a lot of pushback from people about this, which is absolutely insanity because I, I don't make the rules, right? And if I push the boundaries of the rules, I lose my work. So maybe let's not be so selfish and entitled and narcissistic. And let's like have some understanding about what's actually going on here. There's another option. There will always be another option over on Rumble for the unedited version. But with on this platform, we're going to have to stay within the boundaries and the guidelines of this platform. That's just how it is. It's their, it's their house. It's their rules. Right? So, um, so yeah. Anyway, all right, you guys. Well, uh, keep posted. I don't know when the next video is going to be because I'm still researching some stuff. Hopefully, I'll be able to film some stuff tomorrow. Um, but, um, yeah, and if you're interested in doing the Alchemy of Movement Workshop over on Gnostic for the Zoom option, like online option, let me know down in the comment section below so we can figure out how we can facilitate that on Gnostic TV for you guys. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you soon.